In this video, we will look at the Network Insights Resources application on Data Center Network Manager for NXOS. Once the application is installed on top of DCNM, you'll be able to find the application running. As we see, it's green, which indicates good health of the application. I can browse or go into the application by double clicking on NIR, or I can go into monitor and scroll to the Network Insights tab and click on Resources. So let's look at NIR or Network Insights Resources for Data Center Network Manager. The application is collecting software and hardware telemetry data from each of the switches in the fabric and it's correlating, it's storing all that data with historical retention in a time series database and it's presenting a lot of data for our users for day two operations. So as we see here, we have a dashboard view and this is again per fabric. I can go back in time, so I can click last hour, I can go back as much, I can click a particular timestamp as well for a particular day. Here we see the inventory. So here we're looking at how many spines, how many leaf switches we have in the fabric and anomalies by type and severity. The point of the dashboard view is to quickly give the users an idea of what needs their attention, what kind of problems are seen in the switches in the fabric. And this is given in a very easily consumable way without having to click through different nodes and different kinds of issues. The anomalies are all represented by type and severity in the dashboard view. I can click on anomalies by type, for example, and as we see, there's different kinds of anomalies here. We have flow level anomalies, we have anomalies for utilization, which is basically telling me if the, any, any resource is exhausting um, or crossing any thresholds. We're looking at environmental level anomalies and anomalies for statistics, which is for our interfaces and routing protocols, as well as endpoints. So let's look at each of these one by one. If I click on flow analytics, this one will basically point me to any flow level or data plane level issues. The one that we're looking in the latest NIR application, which is 212, is packet drops and any threshold violations for latencies for a flow. So as we see over here, there's a couple anomalies and we see packet drops. I can click on any of these as you see if the cleared is true or false. We can click on any of these anomalies and this one's still active. I see the detection time, so the start and the last seen time, the categories flows, what node the drop was seen on and this one's a major anomaly due to the drops. I can see the anomaly details, so the source, destination, a lot more flow related information and the description. I can get a detailed view of the flow by clicking on the object. Here we see the start time, the end time, the source destination, so our IP, port, protocol, what kind of flow this was. We're looking at how many packets were dropped for that flow, latency of the flow made it through, and the ingress as well as the egress uh, details. As we scroll down, we are able to see anomalies. So there's a couple of anomalies here, packet drops seen due to buffer drop. Again, there's different kinds of packet drop that an IR can detect. This one is an example of a buffer drop on a particular interface in node number four. As we scroll down, you'll be able to see the path summary. And there were drops on node number four on this particular interface. And that's what is indicated here by a red dot. So that shows a buffer drop. I can also look at the reverse path and related details, which is average latency, ingress burst and egress burst maximum, the packet drops. So here I can see exactly when the packet drops happened and the traffic pattern itself. So this is giving me a lot of flow related data. It's giving me an end to end flow path, the latency drops and drop reasons and very, very useful to detect network level problems. So that's an example of flow anomalies. The next one is around utilization. And here, this is all about resources. 
the application is looking at uh, controller level data, it's looking at switch level data and uh, it's deriving a trend, it's baselining the behavior and based on threshold violations or if suddenly so certain changes are seen, sudden additions or deletions, that is considered as an anomaly and that is uh, brought up here or bubbled up in the dashboard view as a utilization anomaly. So right here, we're looking at different kind of resources at a switch level. For example, if the VTEPs that are used are above the critical threshold and the maximum threshold could be a software verified scale for that software or it could be a hardware limit depending on what resource we're looking at. So here we look at VTEPs, the LPM entries, the number of VRFs, for example. So anytime the utilization exceeds a particular threshold, depending on whether it's exceeding the minor, major, or critical threshold, we see these anomalies. You can click on any of these and you'll be able to see the description and again the object. Here we're going to be able to see the exact utilization of the resource. And here it was about VRF and VTEP, so it's red because it's uh, crossed certain thresholds. We'll look at the exact number in use. And this one's walking me through all the resources and respective anomalies in node number two. Likewise, we also have rate of change anomalies, which will point me to sudden additions or deletions if seen in the fabric. Now let's look at environmental anomalies. Here it's all about a temperature, fan speed, memory, CPU, uh, power. So over here, for example, if uh, CPU exceeded certain threshold, we can click on it and we can get detailed information on which process was using CPU or the memory or even you know what, what the fan speed is like, uh, what the temperature is like. If I click on memory, for example, shows me exactly which process was using the memory. For fan utilization, it walks me through the fan utilization of each of the trays and again the color codes represent uh, anomalies and the arrows represent the trend. So this is around the environmental data. And this is again at a node level as we see here. For Anomalies for statistics, there's a lot of type of anomalies that are seen here. This is majorly around interface level uh, errors, anomalies and routing protocols. For interfaces, we're looking at physical as well as virtual interfaces, including port channels and VPCs. Uh, we're looking at different kind of anomalies. For example, if, uh, if the utilization exceeds or drops beyond a threshold at an interface level, if there is CRC errors, stomped CRC, FCS errors, um, if there is a split brain scenario seen or if one of the members of the port channel is down um, or if there's a transceiver level problem seen at an interface, that's all bubbled up in statistics. There's also anomalies seen around routing protocols like LACP, LLDP flaps, BGP level anomalies and CDP level anomalies. So here we're looking at uh, split brain scenarios. So it's telling me exactly between which nodes split brain scenario was observed and if it's still seen, if the port channel is down. So we see a couple of those anomalies. Looks like the setup has port channel down in node number six. If we browse through different options here, we're looking at DOM anomalies as well. So typically this is very difficult to detect Every time there is a transceiver problem, a uh, DOM anomaly is raised, pointing me to uh, transceiver uh, issues. Here, the power was below threshold, which is why the transceiver of um, it, Ethernet 1 slash 26 in node number 1 is malfunctioning. So you see a couple of DOM anomalies over here. This one is around BGP anomalies, so I can click on this one. And um, BGP anomalies are seen for different reasons. Imagine there is a, a whole bunch of retries or connection failures with a particular neighbor. That's when it generates an anomaly. Or if there are flaps seen or a certain number of pure uh, prefixes are lost, that's also considered as a BGP anomaly. So this is giving me the BGP session detail. 
I click here and get detailed view of the session. I see the anomaly. And this one is the BGP pure status is not established with a particular neighbor. So it's pointing me to the neighbor and it's telling me that you have two neighbors from node number two. While one is established, the other one is open confirm and I'm not receiving any prefixes if the operation state is not established. So it's giving me the details for each of the neighbors here. And the recommendation would be definitely to check the config, to check the reachability with this neighbor. So this is a control plane anomaly generated over here. So these are some examples around statistics um, and anomalies around uh, interfaces and routing protocols. So the dashboard view is intense um, level of data with respect to anomalies. But if I want to scroll into any of this data, there's a lot of this data available under resources, environmental statistics and flow analytics. So around resources, we have a dashboard view, which walks me through top nodes by utilization of resources, giving me an idea of what nodes I need to look into for resource exhaustion. I can go into a detailed view and we can see top nodes by all of these resources right here. This is a graphical representation, again, over time. So if you remember, we selected one hour. This is showing me data for the last hour in the fabric. We have different kind of resources. So under operational resources, we have a Mac, a routing table, multicast as well as unicast. Config resources, so VLANs, VTEPs, VNIs, if uh, we have VXLAN enabled, VRFs and hardware resources around how many ports are in use, what kind of bandwidth is in use, a COP, LPM, host route table statistics, any stats around TCAMs, ACLs, port ACLs, VLANs and routed ACLs. This number is representing the current utilization, the max, and we have the trend information, color codes represents anomalies. So a lot of detailed information, very useful for capacity planning in the resource dashboard. Around environmental, again, top nodes by utilization of the environmental data. You can go into the browse view and get detailed information on top nodes by CPU, memory, temperature, fan, power supply, storage, and detailed information on each of these aspects for each node in the fabric. Around statistics, so we have interface and routing protocol stats. We can sort interfaces by error, transmit or receive utilization errors. In the interface stats, we have, um, uh, again, our physical as well as virtual port channels. And we can look at uh, the receive utilization, transmit utilization and respective errors for each kind of interface there. So right here, we have utilization. Uh, if there are any CRC errors, we'll be able to see them here. Around protocol statistics, so what we have right now is BGP, CDP, LLDP, and LACP, and any errors around uh, these protocols. In the flow analytics, so this one is historical retention of flow data. What we saw on the dashboard were bad flows, if there were any drops or latency violations based on the baseline the application has uh, uh, you know, seen and the trend it has observed for each flow. However, if the user would like to see any of the flows that was collected and ingested by the application and correlated, all of these can be seen here as well. So each flow seen by the application is stored historically and user can look at all these flows here as we see a lot of information available for each flow the source, destination, ingress, egress, port, protocol, uh, latency, drops. And again, user can also search for each of these flows right here using our different filters for each of these parameters. Again, if you scroll through any of these uh, flows, we looked at a bad flow. So let's look at a good flow. This one went through and uh, we are able to see the path summary for that flow and the related details. So this data remains constant for all the flows, whether there were drops or no drops. So that was a demonstration of Network Insights resources, which is common across ACI and NXOS.
This application can be hosted on top of APIC and DCNM and helps our users with data operations with respect to troubleshooting and debugging in the data center. Thank you for watching.